Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back. This is going to be a brief review and then a short little tutorial or amplification, if you will, of my ICT breaker. So right away, we're looking at the dollar index. This is a weekly chart. You can see the inefficiency here between this candle's low and this candle's high. We worked up inside of that and had pretty much an indecisive candle. So it was kind of a lackluster trading session for dollar last week this range in here I'd, I'd like to see it prove to me that it wants to go higher or lower and to go higher it needs to get above the rejection block here so the close of this candle if it trades above that then i believe we'll resume going higher if we take out this low then i'm going to look for liquidity below here uh, because we're in the middle of the range the range being the low, the high. It's indecisive. Uh, it's not one-sided. It's not easy to see which side the marketplace is going to reach for. So when it's like this, we sit still. We try not to force our will or impose a, a bias that's not necessarily predetermined yet. All right, so here is daily chart. You can see again, this is that weekly fair value gap. Uh, the bodies were just outside of that range, and that's another reason why I'm electing to sit still and not really have a hard bias going into the new week here. It's also 4th July in the United States. The volume may be affected by that uh, greatly, so I believe the, the latter part of this week will be the real cleanest price action. So we'll be looking for price action post-Wednesday. Uh, daily fair value gap down here, you can see it reached into that. Uh, we mentioned that as a downside draw uh, previously in previous commentary. And then we move from this liquidity below this low and inefficiency. Remember, price only goes down for one of those two reasons. And it rallies back up into the short-term premium relative to the high and the low. Midpoint in here. The inefficiency on the weekly chart being transposed to the daily. You can see that's where we drew into. Now, that's going to provide... The backdrop for shorts in euro dollar and pound dollar. Here's euro dollar on the weekly chart, weekly inefficiency. Okay, basically the opposite of what we saw on dollar index, as you would expect. Uh, the consequent encroachment of this wick here, we treat wicks as a gap, just like the algorithm does. So the market saw the weekly high form right at the previous week's. Consequent encroachment of its premium are right here. And again, indecisive weekly range, but trading down into a discount buy sign and balance sell sign efficiency, which is framed by the high of this candle and the low of that candle. So we traded down into it and then back into the weekly range. Those weekly ranges applied to the daily chart. You can see how we traded up into Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, high of the week. Where did it form the high of the week? In the previous week's consequent encroachment on this weekly candle. Don't take my word for it. Go into it and you'll see it right here. All right, let's drop down into an hourly chart on Euro. All right, so you can see how we worked lower here. Here is that run onto the previous week's consequent encroachment on its wick on the weekly chart, creating the high on Tuesday. If we're bearish, we have a 70% likelihood of creating the high on Tuesday. And we see it trading up into that consequent encroachment, breaks down, finds some support at the old fair rate gap, orange, in the higher time frame. Tried to rally and gave up the ghost, broke lower. So we have breaker in here. I know it looks rather sloppy and I'll be teaching you a little bit more about breakers in the latter portion of this lecture. So all of this run here, extend that over. You can see we're hitting that perfectly there. And it just so happens to be near the upper end of that old inefficiency. So we're blending a lot of things in terms of inefficiency and buy side liquidity. Buy side would be resting above this short term high here. So we rallied above, 
back into a premium array, which is a breaker. Trades up into it and aggressively sells off, attacking the sell side below this low and down into that low here and into that discount fair value gap. Then once we got into it, we returned quickly back up into the premium fair value gap that's shaded in orange. So I promise you, if you take the information I showed you on the higher time frame on your own charts and then drop down to these lower time frame charts like this, you'll see Euro was, was beautifully handled with the elements I'm teaching in terms of short term premium high, short term discount low, inefficiency above the marketplace, inefficiency below the marketplace. And day of the week, and then the opposite end of the range for me here on Friday. On a 15 minute time frame, you can see that we have a very nice drop here and the rally up. Now, all of this back and forth in here, that's not a concern for me. Uh, you might be looking at this saying, okay, well, isn't this a breaker from high to low to higher high? No. The range from this high down to that low up to that high. All of this price action from the high to the low to the high right there. I'm ignoring all of this. This is time distortion. You have to look at the time of day when the highs are forming. The algorithm refers to time first, not just simply because there's a price run. So we're looking at high, low, higher high. This movement down here, that's where the secret sauce is, if you will. <laughs> I'll get to that later on. But that down close candle right there, that is the sweet spot. Right in here, if you extend that forward, that's where it's hitting that. Now we're cutting through candles because we are not supply and demand. That's a fallacy. The market trades up into a premium relative to the range from high to low. And we're also reaching into the upper portion of the shaded orange inefficiency. Breaker, cut through candles, bang, hit it. What time of day? New York open. Aggressively runs for the sell side here and the sell side liquidity in the higher time frame and into that discount fair value gap. Once it enters that, then the algorithm pulls right back up into the middle of the range, range being the high and low of the week. And now we're in consolidation inside of that premium fair value gap. All right, moving right along, this is the E mini SP weekly chart. And I mentioned that we would try to reach up into this weekly volume imbalance, and we just fell short of it. It looks like it touched it here. But I promise you, it didn't get there. It got real close to it, though. But it's been acting as a draw on liquidity. As you remember, the NASDAQ reached up into its volume imbalances on its weekly chart. But we were waiting for the six sister effect on S&P to draw this specific index higher. And we have seen it deliver like gangbusters. So bias starts on the weekly chart. We have to know where it's likely to reach for. And then what we're doing is trying to predict Yes, unfortunately, we, we do try to predict. We don't react to price. We need to predict the likely expansion in the weekly chart. And we're not trying to pick the closing price. I have tools for that. We're not trying to demand that it closes on the high or the low. We don't need that. But we want to know where it's likely to expand, higher or lower. And if you look real close, there was a small little inefficiency right there between the previous week's low and this week's high. So that little inefficiency right there, the market opened, traded down into that, and then rockets up, taking out the short-term high, but drawing into this area here. Okay, so I suspect that's still probably going to be a factor for this week. On the daily chart, you can see we have this inefficiency here and this inefficiency here. Now, I sent the tweet out about a week and a half ago, stating that these were the two reference points I liked. And initially, at the time of the tweet, I said I favored the low end. We went down into it. The top of the market was not called by me. I don't try to do that when we're in primary buy models. So we're looking for longs, reaching for discount, and then expanding into inefficiency of the bull marketplace or buy side liquidity. The buy side would be resting right above here, and inefficiency would be the weekly volume imbalance, both being above market price at the beginning of the week, and price drew up higher throughout the week. So each individual day, if you would have been focusing only on longs, that's what you're doing. You're filtering out in the best case scenario where the higher time frame weekly chart is suggesting price may go. Ultimately, we stay with that bias each day. 
every session we go in looking for a reason to be long when there's a buy program underway, and that's what we're seeing here. Zooming in on the daily chart, I want you to see how we were beautifully delivered into this candle's high. You see that trading right there, and perfect delivery, rallies up. And then we have this area here, which is a premium when it was down here, it was a premium to value gap. But if we're expecting to go higher, my anticipation is we're going to take out this high and gravitate towards that weekly volume imbalance. So the buy program would send us into discovery of buy side and premium volume imbalance. You would grade this range with 25, 50, and 75% respective levels or gradients, and you would treat each one of them as a target. Well, we only got as far as the buy side here and just fell short of touching the low end of that weekly volume imbalance. But this right here, as we're climbing back up into this range, if you're familiar with my market maker buy and sell model, I know that is not wake off. Uh, this area here, that inefficiency, which we reach for, if we're bullish, we're expecting to expand through that. That will become my inversion fair value gap. Find that in your wake off textbooks. So there's our levels. We're going to show it in two sets of small little trend lines and we'll drop down the lower time frame. All right, so we have the market trading down into the lower fair value gap and then we have an expansion higher and in all of this range right there. That range is the last up close candle within the low, high, lower low, which trades into what? The inefficiency with these two red lines here. That's the lower discount fair value gap, the one I was telling you a week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago, that I favored the lower one, and the market did drop down into it. Then we have a displacement to the upside, taking out a short-term high. If you're aggressive, you can use that high. Which one do you, do you use, ICT? Whichever one I'm trusting at the time. So if you want to be a conservative trader, demanding a lot more behind the trades, then you would use this one here. So why that one? Because it's the, high, it's the high between this low and this low, which is a bullish breaker. So you would expand that to the right, and as price rallies above, comes down, finds some support multiple times here, then rallies up, consolidates, takes out sell side there. Once a stop run occurs, the market should expand higher. And it does, rips through that premium fair value gap that we would expect to see it trade to. And look at that. Look at the bodies respecting the high end of that inversion fair value gap. It does not need to trade down into it. It can, but these are instances where sometimes when you'll see me doing my executions, I'm recording it, I'll say it's better for these inefficiencies or that particular fair value gap to remain unfilled. We want to see this be treated as a measuring gap or a breakaway gap. So it's only necessary for me or you to see this area right in here provide support. We're seeing that in the body's close and the body's opening and then protraction. The inefficiency here doesn't look inefficient on the lower time frame hourly chart, but it was based on what? The daily chart. So you have to transpose those levels on your lower time frames. Otherwise, you'll lose all the plot narrative and storyline behind why price should be reacting or you know, drawing to specific levels. So that right there would have been an area where I would add, if I was trading the mini S&P and looking for a reason to go long and add more, say, for instance, say you bought uh, the breaker down here. And you wanted to see it rip through this fair value gap. Anyone that simply looks at gaps in price charts now may think that the, every inefficiency is a buy or sell. Uh, they lose the idea of knowing where price is ultimately trying to reach for, which is the number one rule I teach as my students coming in. I, I press that very hard as your main focus because it's going to be the one that you're going to utilize for the rest of your career that gives you all the comfort and confidence to know what you're doing and how you're operating, being bullish or bearish. Bias comes by understanding where the higher time frame weekly draw on liquidity is. You can't watch a video and there's nobody else out there going to show you a real shortcut, always a winner approach. It, it takes time understanding price action. What is it reaching for? And this is enough to warrant an expansion higher. And until we find it providing support, remember it's, this red line here is the high of that fair value gap. Let me go back up into the daily chart. I'm going to show you this little area right here where these two candles right there are occurring. 
and finding support at the high end, it's this. It's that level right there, which is the high of that fair value gap. And we're expecting price to go higher. So we're not looking for it to go up here to go down. That's not the, that's not the 2022 model. Okay. We're using this as a stepping stone or a rung on the ladder to provide us a reason to see more injection of higher prices. So we see that occurring right there. So that's a, a really good signature. Even if I didn't take a partial entry and scaling in with a, you know, like a pyramiding position by seeing that that comforts me in terms of being on side. So I can anticipate the market reaching up into that buy side of the clear dealer and it reaches up into it and look at the bodies respecting what that old high. Yes, we wick through it. Yes, we fall just short of the weekly volume imbalance, but we're not trying to demand that it gets there. We offer ourselves up the opportunity for a best case scenario. Should it trade there? But we're open to the idea that it may need to do that the following week because it's doing this on a Friday. All right, S&P 15 minute candlestick. You can see a really good illustration of that run into that inversion fair value gap. Hits it and rallies. Inefficiency trades down into it here at the open. Rips higher, consolidates, trades higher once more, digs into and I'll showed you execution on Twitter and the link will be obviously shared in the, either the comment section, which I'll only be the one commenting. And yes, I see your comments when you leave them, but it's, it's personal for me. I don't, I'm not trying to broadcast your adoration for me. <laughs> it, it's, I don't need to share that, but I enjoy reading them. It rips into that buy side there and then comes all the way back down into the inefficiency here with the, this cluster of order flow right there. And that's where we settle on the day. So on a 15 minute time frame, if you look at this, uh, we have obviously been looking for higher prices on NASDAQ and on ES. And I'm focusing primarily on ES because I've been teaching conceptually the six sister concept that I have. And we've already seen the upside leadership by NASDAQ. So we have been focusing on ES to show how that particular index has been drawn higher in sympathy trying to catch up to what was delivered with the run higher in NASDAQ. So because we're bullish, we want to look for periods where there is accumulation. Accumulation of longs. So we can see what we have a low and a lower low in ES. On NASDAQ, we're seeing a divergence there. NASDAQ saying, no, I'm not willing to make that lower low like we did in S&P respectively. So this is S&T divergence and we would expect price to go higher. If we were looking for the market to trade with the leadership issue, okay, in other words, say the NASDAQ hadn't already established its dominance higher, but it has been for weeks, and it did this, this divergence here, then I would have been trading NASDAQ. But because NASDAQ has already done a lot of upside, and I'm trading the six sister approach, the fact that we have this divergence down here, which is a lower low, but not lower low in NASDAQ, you're probably wondering why wouldn't you trade in NASDAQ? You're not incorrect by doing that, but I'm teaching you by using the six sister approach that by sympathy, this is going to try to trade higher in a little bit more, I don't want to say stronger, but more reliable because NASDAQ has already done its upside delivery. So, the S&P is basically going to have its better days ahead, which is what we saw last week on the upside. So I would view this low being taken out there as a stop run. And that's how you trust a turtle soup entry. Okay. Um, buying sell stops. And this would be simply just buying the stronger leadership issue at the time. And you wouldn't be incorrect by doing it because you can see it does in fact rally. But look at the delivery of price in comparison between the two. A lot more willingness to show it wants to go higher because look, we rallied higher and then come back down and touched the high end of that fair value gap, which is this red level here. And now we also have that breaker extending it forward inside of that range. We can be buying has a lot of support of discount behind this entry area here. And at the same time, look what's occurring in NASDAQ. It's really muddy, meaning that it's not so sure 
footing compared to that one where we have a higher low here. We don't see that higher low here. It's a sloppy consolidation. This one here rips higher, comes back, and then really wants to go higher. One more time, touch to the inversion pair value gap. And it's the low of the bullish breaker, and it rips higher and consolidates the rest of the day. And then we have another confirmation that we're looking for a higher delivery in price, low, lower low. So this is a stop run below those lows here. So that's a run on sell side liquidity, and it touches the breaker bullish breaker. At the same time, NASDAQ is unwilling to make a lower low. That's SMT. It's telling you that there's accumulation, there's a crack in correlation, and this will never stop working. The markets will always have these types of inefficiencies when prices are running out highs and lows, respectively. If you have a bias, if you know you're looking for higher prices, and you see these confirmations, that's what this is. This is not a timing tool. It's not a selection tool. It's a confirmation. Okay, because we're using SMT as a qualifier to indicate that we are, in fact, on side by trying to be bullish. And we can use this idea to, if you're a turtle soup type trader, if you're trying to train yourself to, to buy sell stops or sell buy stops, that means you're doing a run against the existing pending orders above the marketplace or below the marketplace. Without this insight, without the understanding of where the market's going to go to, you're going to find that trading a turtle soup pattern or a false breakout and trading it in the opposite direction. It's going to be very difficult for you to do that and scary, but this is how you learn how to do it. And you have to do months of this type of analysis. Then you can go in there and just buy sell stops and sell buy stops. And you've seen me do executions of that recording it. The primary function of SMT behind this is supporting the idea that we are in a buy program and it's okay to keep focusing on longs or ES. So the market goes higher. Again, another area here. Higher low, lower low. So what is this? This is reaching for the relative equal lows for the sell side. So this is a run on sell side liquidity. So a trader using NASDAQ, they could use that as a long entry. Same here. Buying sell side, but we're seeing what relative strength now show up in ES. Higher low, lower low. It's the time of the week where the market wants to reach for its finale. It's reaching high up into the June 16, 2023 high, which is this level right here. And gravitating towards that weekly volume imbalance, which is that blue shaded area here. It's not shown the entire range because I want to have all the details being shown here. But again, look how it's treating the top end of that inversion fair value gap on the daily chart. Hits it and then rips higher, reaching into that buy sell liquidity above June 16, 2023's high. And then the added benefit of knowing that that weekly volume imbalance shaded in blue, that's a large magnet for the algorithm to want to reach up into that because it's inefficiency. So when we're down here, down here, in here, over here, in here, they're all points of reference for you to either be long, add to existing positions if you're short-term or a swing trader, or just confirming that you're on side for bias and then you can look for lower time frame order flow, like for a silver bullet in the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock morning hour or 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. afternoon silver bullet. So there's a lot of things you can do to work with this information, but I leave it to you to determine how you're going to use it for your particular model. And you can use the multiplier of your choice. It could be a optimal trade entry. It could be a bullish order block that you're trading on. You could be buying sell side liquidity. You can be doing inversion fair value gaps, regular fair value gaps, institutional order flow entry drills. The, the list is endless in terms of what it is that you want to trade. And whatever that multiplier is, which is a PV array that I've taught, that's your entry model. But this is the framework to determine where the market's going to go and when it's going to be confirming to you that it wants to go higher. All right, I'm going to take all this other extra stuff off here so you can see the divergences. Lower, higher. Lower, higher. Higher, lower. All indicating that it wants to go higher. Now, many times my students, when they first see an instruction or lecture video about SMT, they think that they need to go into the charts and look for the discrepancy or difference between lower low 
and then there's no lower low here. Okay, that means they can go long. That's not how you use SMT. It is a qualifier. Okay, it just gives you confirmation that order flow is probably not in the direction that you see the lower low being made when a higher low is being formed in a market that you're anticipating to be bullish anyway. So we were looking for this area up here for weeks. We've been calling this months actually a draw up here for ES. So we've been bullish on ES for months. And finally, we just fell short of it here. And I'm, I'm not convinced that we had the high form here. So we're likely to see it draw up into that going into this week's trading. All right, so here is the five minute chart on ES and I'm showing it in regular trading hours. So that way we're showing that gap right here. So this is where we settled on Thursday and we opened up at 9.30 on Friday's trading, regular trading hours. So if we add the details in here, uh, I sent a tweet out on June 30th, 2023 at 9.52 a.m. This is always in New York local time. And right there is the candle I made that post on Twitter. I said that this high, 44.93 and three quarters, that high right there is the daily June 16, 2023 high. I said that that buy side is juicy, meaning that it's going to want to gravitate towards that. So how would you use that information? Well, you can use it with fair value gaps, bullish order blocks, buying sell side liquidity. Below this low is what? Sell side. So you could be a buyer down there. Oh, wait a minute, ICT. Didn't you say that these opening range gaps, they, they can draw price down in? Yes. But there's also tendencies for the market to have these large range gaps because it's in a hurry to get somewhere. Where is it in a hurry to get to? That weekly volume imbalance in shaded blue and the buy side liquidity I told you right here. So we dropped down ahead of lunch in New York uh, lunch hour. We took out sell side there, rallied, created a fair value gap. That's what I'm showing you here, right there. Okay. The market drops down into that perfectly and then rallies away and attacks what? This area of relative equal high. So this is your first initial buy side liquidity. Then the larger pool of liquidity is here on the daily chart on June 16, 2023, that daily high. You see we gravitated towards there. We worked around that level and finally punched up and just fell short of reaching into that weekly volume imbalance. And then finally at the last portion of the day, the market rips back into the range and trades into this inefficiency between these two five-minute candles, which is a 10-minute fair value gap. Zooming in here on a five-minute chart, again, here's where I said that we would be looking for a draw to 4493.75 buy side. This level right here is that high on the daily chart. The market gravitates from this point here all the way up into that level there. So you do not look for shorts here. You don't lose your mind and become fearful because we have a huge opening range gap on Friday with unfinished business that June 16th has buy side. It wanted it. I indicated that here. No other time frame on Friday that I point to a lower target. I did not say another level that failed to hit. Okay. We talked about this as a draw on liquidity that weekly volume imbalance, but I gave a very specific level for targeting. So when we look for the directional bias to really come into effect, we're looking for higher prices. We did get a stop run on sell side there. And then we've seen price go higher and inefficiency. It comes back down into it. Now we're in lunch. So where's the buy side above here? So above those relative equal highs, that's what this is right there. We're down in the one minute chart now. So 44.87 and a half, that's buy side. Here is that five minute fair value gap. I will be teaching and talking about this coming week. The 11.50 to 12.10 macro. It's a time of day where the algorithm will begin a price run and it runs for liquidity. Sell side is here. It drops down right there and then goes higher. Let me take you back up to the five minutes so that way you know where you're at and get your bearings. We're looking at this run here and drop down between these two blue lines, targeting that initially, but ultimately above the June 16, 2023. So that, those levels here. We're going to look at all of this price action and this run up here. Right now it's on a five minute chart. 
looking at it now on a one minute chart, it looks like this. Here's the relative equal highs. The drop down below the lower sell side is. And then at 1150, 1210, the algorithm will begin its buy model. It will run higher, trades into the inefficiency. It doesn't look like an inefficiency here on a one minute chart, does it? Which is the reason why you have to cycle through time frames. You have to be able to go through a five, four, three, two, one minute chart when you're day trading because you'll see the inefficiency that the market will reprice to. And then once it does that perfectly, and it's the time of day when we'd expect what? The lunch run on liquidity that's here. And we're blending. Not only is the lunch hour macro reaching up for the buy side, but it's also this would be a run in the same direction of our higher time frame bias, reaching for the June 16th high. Because in normal instances, like say we were bearish, uh, we would see the market rip up into here, take out the buy side, and then work lower because we're in a bearish sell program on the higher time frame charts. We're not in a bearish sell program. We're in a higher time frame bullish buy program, meaning that that shaded blue area up here, that weekly volume imbalance, and that old high on June 16th, 2023, above that high is going to be buy side. Someone went short. Large funds have liquidity above there. What kind? Buy side, buy stops. They're protecting. They were holding shorts. The algorithm runs against that. It's not running against you. Okay. It's not looking for your order. It's going for where the large fund liquidity is, or it's running for a higher time frame inefficiency, which is also conveniently allowing that algorithm to reprice against the buy side liquidity resting above June 16, 2023. So this run higher, it gets into it here. And you see there's a first partial right above relative equal highs. I'm holding. You want to catch the big runs, the big rips higher and lower and get the lines portion of the daily range. That's what I show in here. First partial here. Then I took the idea of the high here to that high and I did gradients. And you'll see that in the execution video. Um, I want to see it reach up into those levels and I layered out limit orders. And then I had one up in here and I had one ultimately uh, just below the weekly volume imbalance to see if it can reach for it as a best case scenario. Uh, it didn't get that again, and I'll come back down and stop me out here on the final single contract. If you look at the diagram here, uh, this is my bearish breaker. Uh, this is not a break and retest. Okay. It's not an FU candle. <laughs> it's uh, not a wake off. It is a schematic in terms of understanding how runs on liquidity and then a repricing lower occurs. So what we need to know is where is liquidity? Now there's two ways to use the breaker. Uh, this is a bearish breaker. And what we're understanding with this diagram is there's obviously when you have a market that is predisposed to go lower. If you're anticipating the market going lower, if you're looking for a bear market to provide an additional entry or a point of reference for pyramiding new short positions, this is what you're looking for. Okay, um, This is one of the strongest PD arrays I have because the characteristic behind this PD array is that it is acting on pending orders. So if you've ever traded and had your stop run hit, and then see it run in your favor after your stop loss was hit. That's what this pattern capitalizes on. It really takes you into the marketplace in terms of a narrative to attack the ill-informed or retail trader that tries to look for continuations, um, some kind of uh, you know, trend following model. If they have no idea where liquidity is and what the narrative is and why the market should be going lower, um, they get many times trapped by this move. Um, they will be caught being a buyer of a breakout above a short-term high. And then it only goes up to a higher time frame buy side liquidity where the actual reversal occurs. There's two stages of liquidity for the highest form of precision with my breaker. You'll always have the short-term buy side liquidity above the short-term high, but it's going to want to reach into a higher time frame buy side liquidity. And then you're waiting to see if it runs away from that. And then inside of this price lake from A to B, that right there is what you're looking for for targeting. Now, I haven't taught this before. This is the first time even my charter members and my 
private mentorship, which nobody can join anymore. And I don't even make videos for them anymore. Okay. The only thing they get to do is ask me questions. So this A to B leg, we're ignoring all of this. This is market protraction. Okay. This is the manipulation. So with this out of the equation, okay, think of this as time distortion. It's running from the low to the high to get that liquidity. But once it does that, ignore it for a second because this is not the 2022 model. 2022 is something entirely different where you would use this price leg. Oh, you're confusing me, ICT. I understand. If you watch the videos, there's two different approaches being used. Okay. We're using the price leg from A to B. Once this market creates this run here and it starts to drop down, if I trust that I'm on side after, that means I'm bearish. Okay. And I'm expecting lower prices. I'm already going short when it runs above the buy side. It may not be my biggest position. I might scale in a larger portion. I'll give you an example. Um, the model I've been showing you with trading ES is I'll go in and trade six contracts first, and then I'll add three, and then I'll add one for a 10 lot position. So I'm scaling in. This type of trade here, I would go in with one, add three in here, and then six on a really good run into the breaker. I'm building in the likelihood of even if I'm wrong and it goes against me on the six contracts, I have three and one that help offset or mitigate most of the drawdown that would be occurring if it was to quickly reverse and take out that high. I'm not suggesting that you should trade that way, but I am trying to teach you a little bit more in terms of amplification of the breaker pattern, because there's a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of people making courses and mentorships, and they really don't know what they're doing and they're really misguiding people. So to keep you from doing that <laughs> and to correct you, um, this is what this lesson's for. Uh, I'll have a lot more details about these PD arrays in my books, but uh, I want to give this today. This A to B price leg, you take that leg from the high down to the low, and you lay your Fibonacci on that. And then you, you do your standard deviations lower. Whatever this range is from here to here, one standard deviation lower, that is the easiest bread and butter approach to using the breaker. If you're on side and you know you're looking for it and you're in a bear market, you don't need it to come down into this level here and trade back up. Many times you'll see me annotate a breaker and I'm entering in this price leg running lower before it even breaks out that low because I'm not a breakout trader. I'm not a break and retest trader. And so everybody thinks that I'm, I'm chilling when I do a breaker. No, they have no idea. You have no idea if you think that. You have zero understanding of what I'm doing. I could be selling short throughout this entire range using the 2022 model and then use the breaker as an additional area where I can add and pyramid more. Or I can simply just wait for it to come back down. Or you could do that if you want to be very conservative. Wait for it to provide some means to go back up here. Now, here's what you're afraid of. What happens if I go short here and it goes right up here or goes into my stop loss and stops me up? You take a loss. How's that for logic? Then you consider, does it still want to go lower? If it does and nothing's changed, you just got stopped out. You just go in again with half the position size that you used on your first trade. That's all you do, folks. You're not going to avoid a losing trade. It's going to happen. You will lose. Okay. I have losing trades. If I traded every single day, every single session and tried to trade everything I've ever taught, invariably I would have losing trades. But what I have done over 30 years is I've determined the ones I really favor based on the dynamics in the marketplace at the time, the present narrative, where it's likely to go, where's the next draw on liquidity, what day of the week it is, what time frame, what session, all those things, it's 30 years behind me doing that. So when I talk about things in advance on Twitter and I show you executions, I'm leaning on that 30 years experience. But you don't have 30 years experience. And I'm not trying to talk down or be condescending. But if I try to do everything all the time and through a kitchen sink approach, like many of you try to do and you get frustrated, I'm looking at the best scenarios because I have the experience to determine that. Your time learning to use these tools, you will do that over time too. It may not take you 30 years, obviously, um, but I'm telling you, it's going to take you much longer than you probably anticipate or hope to see it require. And it's okay. That's normal. Everyone gets excited about, you know, wanting to go out there and try to use it right away. But you're also dealing with the most ruthless industry in this world. 
the financial markets, they're, they're not easy for a reason. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But this language I'm teaching you allows you to go in and see where there are opportunities for you to go in and exploit these inefficiencies or imbalances. Obviously, like everything I teach, everything can be reversed. And what we want to see here, if we're bullish, uh, this could be a reversal pattern or it could be a continuation in an existing bull market. Okay, so if we're presently under a buy program and we're expecting higher prices, this can be used intraday. Any time frame, by the way, these patterns form. But you have to understand where there's liquidity. And the best breakers are going to see two levels of sell side. Obviously, the short term that would be created with the short term low here and a rally up. And then a lower drop into a much more significant or, or higher time frame sell side liquidity. So there's two pools of liquidity that's being engaged here. It's this one by, by default that makes the breaker. And then we're seeing it reach into another level. The qualifier that I like to see is I already anticipate this liquidity here, lower, a lower draw on liquidity. And I love when it goes down real close to it and starts to rally because I know what that's doing. It's enticing folks to see that that's a time to go long. And this run higher engineers more liquidity below that low and makes this a much more juicier liquidity pool. So it drops aggressively down in here. Once it takes the sell side out, I could be going long if I'm extremely bullish. If I'm on side, I'm trusting all my analysis, everything is indicating that this market, whatever it is, is going to go higher. I will buy those sell stocks. Now, you may not have the confidence to do that. That's OK. You can treat this price run here. You can use the model 2022 to enter in that. Any fair value gap in here that forms, uh, you can anticipate that that run or use the rules that takes out this high here. Any retracement back then later into that price run, that would be 2022 real rules. But I can be entering in this without any need to take out that high yet. But once it gets down here, my eye goes right to that leg from A to B. And I run standard deviations off of that. And the easiest bread and butter setup would be is using the low to the high, being long in here or somewhere in here with a fair value gap or institutional order flow entry drill or inversion fair value gap. Something in this leg here, there would be a fair value gap. We're back above it. Find some support. Target here. And then two legs of this run. So in other words, whatever this low is to this high, add it to this high up. So that would be one standard deviation of this price range, A to B. That is the easiest, easiest, just bread and butter setup. You can literally carve out an income, a career just with that. But the wonderful thing is, it's not limited to that. Little ICT is going to teach you how to take this information and supercharge it. If you understand where the market's going to go on a higher time frame, if you're utilizing something like this pattern here to get in sync with a higher time frame buy model, you can then use the standard deviations between point A and point B and see if they agree with a larger higher time frame pool of liquidity that you may be utilizing for the ultimate bias or draw that you're reaching for based on the higher time frame trade. So I'll give you an example of that. All right. So here we are looking at uh, where we have opened for this week. Um, presently, we are at July 2nd, 2023. It's five minutes after six on this candle here. Time in New York is almost 10 minutes after six. Always have your charts shown on trading view with the New York session there. So here we have the low, the high, and this is a five minute chart, by the way, low, high, lower, low. So this is a breaker inside of this price leg from A to B. Remember, we're bullish. We're looking for the run from this low to high to do our standard deviations. I've already went through the idea of buying it here because we can be buying inside this leg right there. We don't need to see this high broken and traded back to as support. That is one way of using a breaker. But when you understand where the market's likely to go, you can trade in this run before it happens. So you're, you're not becoming a break and retest type trader like many of the critics will say that I'm teaching you to be. No, and I'm not a break and retest trader. But this low to high to lower low, if you take that A to B leg, you're ignoring this as a run on liquidity. So all of this is time distortion. 
this drop down is both manipulation and time distortion. You are getting knocked out if you're long and using this as a stop loss. The market comes back down, reprices that level, does the dirty work of knocking those traders that have a sell stop below here on their long that were maybe briefly profitable and then drops down and goes against them, stops them out. Most traders will not want to go back in. If you did take a trade like that and you get stopped out, you wait for this type of scenario here where it creates an imbalance. Once it does that, you can be a buyer right there and trust that we've already did a stop run with this run here below that low. But A to B price leg, you use that for your standard deviations. If I show you the FIB, right away you guys can see it if you want to take notes and that's what my FIB looks like. Okay, From here to here you start running scenarios where you have a standard deviation of negative one. So that's one standard deviation. This leg from here to here projected higher, so it's a measured move. You're not measuring from here to here, you're measuring here to here. So it gives you 44.96 and a half. That is easy, easy, easy bread and butter setup for an entry right there. We don't even need this high to be broken. But inside this price leg, we're using the up close candles. More specifically, if you look at it like this, uh, we have this level here, so I'm going to annotate that. Okay, so you can see it. And now I'll take this off. This down close candle right there that disrupts this price run. So it's this range right there. We would use all of that to be a buyer. We would use all of that range there for a return back into the breaker. So this is what you classically see in some of my recordings where I'll show if if I think that we're going to go higher and need to pull back into a larger retracement, we wouldn't want to expect that to here because it's number one, it's Friday of last week. It's really close to that June 16th high anyway. So we don't want to see any deep retracements. So what makes me comfortable buying inside of the price leg before a breaker is ever qualified based on my initial teachings in it. And then you see it usually come back and retest it and then it, run, it rallies higher. We don't need that. I don't need that. Sometimes you'll see me annotate the breaker and I'm getting along right in here and adding to an existing position or entering right away from there. Because I understand that I'm on side, everything is indicated it wants to run to a pool of liquidity or inefficiency above the marketplace. And I'm including the idea that we're on Friday. So the market's gonna be in a hurry to get to that liquidity and draw maybe up into that weekly volume imbalance. So we have two real strong factors acting like a, a magnet, a draw on liquidity, pulling price up. So the algorithm keeps repricing higher. It doesn't matter how many people come in selling short. It does not matter what that volume is. All the sellers can come in all they want. All the book maps, all the level two indicators of showing that there's a lot of you know, sellers that want to you know, come in the market. It doesn't matter. The market's going to just keep repricing higher, 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 and you can't fight that. So all this insight here allows you to differentiate how we use my breaker. There is not just one approach to using it. You have to understand the narrative, the day of the week, all the factors involved, and blending a lot of other things, which makes it a little bit more complicated than your classic support and resistance idea that you're already failing with anyway, because you can't qualify retail support and resistance based on what you see in books. With what I'm teaching you, it helps qualify very specific levels of dynamic support and resistance. I'm not a support and resistance trader. I have given you a language so that way you can see how the algorithm itself that delivers price will react and respect specific price levels. Now, if we take this information and go one step further, we have relative equal highs right in here. Okay, see that? So these relative equal highs, what do we see above those relative equal highs? In our mind, we anticipate what? Buy side liquidity. So when it goes above it here, did it take out the buy side at that 44.96 and a half that was measured with this range here yet? No. But we can now use this as a qualifier for a new breaker. So it could be reaching up there to go lower. And if it was to do that, we can anticipate how far it's going to retrace lower with the Friday retracement. 
we can use this information with the breaker for targeting. And not that I would be wanting to go short, but we can frame if there is going to be like a TGIF trade where you anticipate the market trading back into the weekly range, which is what we're seeing here. It needs to get to this liquidity before it does that TGIF trade. Okay, a lot of you were anticipating on Twitter reaching out to me saying TGIF is going to happen, it's going to happen, but you have to see it get to the liquidity and fulfill its weekly range before it wants to pull back in. So where does it give us details for that? If you look at the high here, which doesn't break above that 44.96 and a half, it trades to it. Look at the high of that candle right there. It's right here. Watch this one up here. It's exactly at 44.96 and a half. Folks, that's perfect. Remember, that's this A to B. It goes right to that level there, but doesn't go any higher. And it drops down and it creates what? A breaker right there. So now I'm not trying to go short. I'm watching and trying to see if it wants to reach up into here. But how can you use this information if you want to be a TGI trader and trade inside the range or the weekly range as a pullback? Look at this breaker here. A, B, and this run higher. This here is just part of this run. So this is inside the range that would take you above. Because look at the bodies. See where they're stopping? These little mohawks. That's what a mohawk is, by the way. When I ever have a level identified on the chart, if I say mohawk, and I'm usually typing it out in advance, so that way you can anticipate this is going to just do this. And we expect that. That's reasonable. Okay. There's going to be some measure of coloring outside the lines that you're going to have to be comfortable with when you're trading. And I have ways of determining where that's likely to occur. My students are learning that, and you're learning it now too. The bodies are saying that, okay, we're not done. It's going to reach higher. Why? Because this standard deviation of 44.96 and a half was just simply confirmed one more time with the bodies. That means it's going to go higher. So we would still use this high to that low. Watch what happens. A to B. Why not this one? This one's the same one as this. Look at that low. 44.91.25. You're looking right up here. That low is 44.91.25. It's the same low I'm showing you here. 44.91.25. But what I'm doing is I'm ignoring this high here because it's unfinished. It's going to run higher. It's either going to go to the weekly volume and balance or run out that high. I don't need to know what that is yet because the A to B leg is already there. This one didn't go lower. But now watch what happens. How low can it retrace with TGIF? Two standard deviations. Inside this inefficiency, inside of the breaker. Get ready to drop your jaw. Sorry, folks. Dollar menu mentors trying to teach my stuff. Don't have the authority to do this. You have the range in which the breaker can pull back into. The low when this candle comes in exactly at 44.80.75. Standard deviation comes in at 4480.75. Folks, that's perfect. That's not Wyckoff. That's not supply and demand. That's not any other thing out there. This is mine. Okay? This is mine. You're listening to the guy who codified it. I am the person. I'm the engineer. I'm the guy that put this together. This right there, you're seeing it. You're not you're gonna find you're not finding it in books. Okay? I'm writing. All the books that's ever going to be made around this right now by teaching it, they're all going to parrot what you're hearing. But that's precision. You are not learning that from anyone else. The, look at the date. July 2nd, 2023. Everything changes with breakers after today. You don't know it yet, so don't go out there and start making videos with it, okay? Yeah, you, you're welcome to go out and start making videos where you observe this phenomenon. That's, that's wonderful because that'll... Not only build your confidence and share it with your community and you're part of my community, whether you like it or not. And that is helpful for you to teach yourself, to see it, observe it. But you're blending so many things. So many things come together. Let's go down to a one minute chart. Okay, we're looking at a one minute chart. Okay, so now we can see how we're utilizing the upper portion of the breaker here, 
One minute chart. You zero in on the change in the state of delivery, that last candle right there. Inside that last candle, I can be a buyer anywhere in here. I can use that order block. Let me, let me change this. I think I can see it better now. See this down close candle right there? It's inside of this breaker. It's the last up close candle when we're in the lowest time frame. So you want to strip it down into the range. Remember, we showed this entire run here on the five minute chart. But for fine tuning your entry, it's the last up close candle prior to the lower run to there. When it's trading in that range, if I have something else inside of this little pocket of price action, uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Zoom in here. Masterclass on the ICT breaker. If we look at the high and the low, if we measure that range, okay, and there's gradients to that. Upper quarter, 50% or, or mean threshold, because it's an order block theory. Breakers are order blocks. And then the low and the lower quarter, okay. Midpoint or mean threshold is 4484.50. Now, if the algorithm is going to allow price to be utilized there to go long, but for smart money, for people that see price like this, what price does this market need to price to to get 4484.50? It needs to at least print 4484.25. Inside of this consolidation, it rallies above it. And drops back down. What's the low of that candle right there? 4484.25. That allows the spread to not be a hindrance for smart money to go long there. Even if you don't take that as a trade, does the market show a willingness to want to move away from that? Yes, that's a signature. I'm watching that. I'm seeing price do that. I want to see these types of things come into the marketplace to support the idea that we're going to continuously grind towards that buy sell liquidity and maybe reach up into that weekly volume imbalance. All of these things lead to a better understanding of where price is going to go. And it's important for you to also know that once we're inside order flow, we have inefficiencies. We've seen the, the long here, and then we're seeing an inefficiency here, but we're bullish. So we're not looking at this as the trade up in the here and then sell off. I've seen so many people tweeting things and other folks that are in other mentorships and guys and gals out there trying to put people in shorts like this. They say, oh, it's an inefficiency or it's good short. And then they have their faces ripped off. What I'm teaching you is how to identify real order flow, understand how the algorithm will reprice, where it's repricing to. And I'm giving you a level of precision that is unrivaled. Look closely. You see this low, high, lower low. Remember, I'm long in here. here. I'm buying all that. All this in here. I'm buying all that stuff right here. I'm buying it there. I'm buying it there. I'm buying it there. What am I utilizing? Look at those levels. Look at them. What am I buying? Consequent encroachment of that five minute fair value cap. That's defined by this level and that level. Then I'm buying what? Consequent encroachment of the inversion fair value gap, which is this level here. I expect this to be support and find a, a, a point of accumulation to send it higher, to attack buy, sell equity and draw up into the high on the 16th of June, 2023. So I'm using these reference points like rungs on a ladder. Okay. Or think of it like a, a mountain climber. Okay. I would never climb a mountain. <laughs> I would never do that. But when climbers are climbing, they're looking for the next anchor point for to anchor their rope or if they're a free climber and they're not using any ropes, which is absolutely madness. They're planning their next grab point. Okay. Where they're going to reach and grab and hold onto that rock face and pull themselves up higher. Well, I'm looking for all these areas as price presents them. So when price was down here, that fair value gap was already there. So I'm, I'm, I'm accumulating long positions here, right in the middle of it, which is consequent encouragement of the five minute fair value gap, which is these two blue lines. That gap was already there on the one minute chart. I want to see it trade up there. It, it, look at the body, respecting it. See it? It's staying inside of that, that gap. Then it comes back down. I'm buying it when it's in the midpoint of it right there. See that little, little halfway point right there? 
I'm, I'm sorry, right there, I'm buying it there. And then I'm buying the low end range of it there. So I'm accumulating and pyramiding with logic. I'm not just, you know, willy nilly throwing darts and throwing mud at the wall and see what sticks and come back and say, ha ha, look how smart I am. No, none of this is cherry picked. This is absolutely engineered. But now because we can see this low, high, lower low, what else is occurring here? That's a breaker. That's a breaker. I'm utilizing that all that framework. I'm going inside this price leg with the support of this idea as a breaker. Because this is an A to B, and this is all distortion and manipulation, I'm using that as the entry point. But I'm going back into this little short-term price leg right here. No way, ICT. You're going to tell me. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going to prove it to you, too. Low to high. Okay? Now watch. All of this is occurring, by the way, in the 1150 to 1210 macro. Okay? It's a specific sweet period of time where the algorithm will start spooling, reaching for liquidity. You have to understand there too, okay? Don't listen to these guys out there that have 1150 or 1210, you know, or maybe my 1050 to 1110 macro times, and they're trying to show you that they're doing something. None of you, none of, looks, listen, none of you know what you're talking about. If you're talking about macros, you have no idea what you're doing, stop spreading misinformation. Okay, I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm not trying to be rude. Okay, but you literally don't know what you're talking about. But this leg here, that's the A to B on that breaker. If we take that, and we know that that buy side liquidity is on June 16th, 2023 high, the daily candle, it's drawing up into that, and maybe even as much as the weekly volume imbalance. So we have this range right here. That what I'm doing in other charts that you don't see me doing, because number one, for a long time, I didn't want to share this information. Okay, number one, you, I'm not obligated to teach it to you. And my charter members who paid me, they're learning this too for the first time. So you're right in here with mentorship. This is mentorship. I'm not doing paid mentorships. There's not going to be an upsell later on. Come and join my club. Okay, it, I don't want to do that anymore. I want you to learn it correctly. And I don't want people that are out there, you know, rebranding my stuff, teaching it incorrectly. If anything is taught outside of what I'm teaching here, they have no idea what they're talking about. But now we have three standard deviations, four standard deviations, five standard deviations, six, seven and a half. Where does seven and a half? Now, if I show you six and a half, that's right at that old high. You see that? 4493.75. That right there tells me that that will definitely reach for that liquidity. Remember, 4493.75 is the high of June 16, 2023. What I'm doing is I'm showing you how to take the levels here for standard deviation. And when they agree with a range of liquidity, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take this off. If we look at how the negative... 6.5 standard deviation comes in at the daily high at June 16th. I know some of you are already like, man, it's just complicated. I understand. Everything's complicated when you first started. When you're in kindergarten, you didn't have to write. And the first few letters in the alphabet was too complicated for you then. Okay. And that's all this is. You're just learning a language. Okay. But what I'm teaching you is we have an expectation that the market will reach up into the liquidity above this high at 44.93.75. Remember, that's why I tweeted couple minutes after nine o'clock on Friday to this range up here, which is the weekly volume balance. So in that range right there, okay, if we take that range and use all the breakers or any standard deviation idea or approach to look for targeting, you want to see a confluence of levels anywhere in that range. So if we anticipate 4496.50, which is based on that A to B price leg, here to here. That's where we got that from. So we have that level. Then we have 4495.75. And in one you know, qualifying and confirming that the high on the 16th of June, 2023, that is in fact going to be reached for. How far above that level? Well, 4495.75 is a good level. And 4496.5 and is a good level. So any one of those two price levels is a good price point to exit. 
you have to factor in the spread. So I give myself anywhere between one and a half handles to a half of handle. And if I'm really trying to show off, I'll do one quarter of a point and try to you know let the spread do that. But all those levels were based and framed with all this information here. Even though when I'm recording, you'll see the link in the, in the comment section or the description of this video below, uh, you'll see me actually do this trade and manage it throughout the whole process. But I'm utilizing a lot of things that you don't understand. These levels are dynamic and it's going to pull price to them. All of the calculations that go behind how these algorithms price either commodities, index futures, Forex, all of them are using the information I'm showing you here. This is not a harmonic pattern. It's not some kind of white call stuff. It's not supply and demand. It's not Elliott Wave. It's none of that stuff. It's understanding time first. What time of day is this occurring? The beginning of the lunch hour in New York. The algorithm will reprice against existing liquidity. What did the morning session see? Lower prices. So it's going to roll back on what? The stops, the resting above these relative equal highs. That's why you see me entering a exit of majority of the trade being taken off there. Why did I take the majority of the trade off there? If you think it's going to go up here, ICT, why did you take the majority? Because it's Friday and I might be wrong. This is a higher time frame target that weekly volume imbalance. So it doesn't have to deliver that on Friday, but I felt very strongly that the June 16th high would be delivered. But in the event that I'm not correct about that, I got the lines portion of the move off at a logical place because I'm teaching you to do that very thing. Now I could have simply took a small portion off here and a larger portion off right here. And then 15 contracts could have came off there and then my final right there. And then eventually my single contract got stopped out there. And I tweeted where I had my stop and where my target was, which was the weekly volume of balance just below it. But all that is in the trade execution. All the details are here. This is not market replay. This is not market replay reports where it's fake. Okay. We're not using Ninja Trader where we can pretend to show profitability. Uh, this is actual real market executions. These are real time applications. I mean, you don't see a replay up here. It, it's, it's, Real executions. So all this stuff is helpful over time when you're utilizing everything that I've taught. You, you're going to have to eventually get to the point where you refrain from trying to get the simple right, right away, figure it out and get out there and start making money because it, it doesn't work that way, folks. It does. I promise you it does not work that way. But if you want unbelievable levels of precision, I'm teaching it to you, but it's going to take you some time to get there, but you don't need to have this level of precision. All you need is a simple bread and butter setup. I taught you that tonight using the breaker. You don't need to have the break and retest. I taught you that tonight. I told you how to buy and sell inside of the breaker before it even goes above its trigger point that I've already introduced initially when I taught breakers. So I'll have much more to teach you with each one of these PD arrays, but for now, this should suffice. Until I talk to you next time, be safe.